Now, aerobic respiration produces lots and lots of energy for the cell in the form of ATP, and it happens inside the mitochondria, the little organelles inside the cell. Now, if the cell does not get enough oxygen, then it will need to switch to anaerobic respiration. And we're gonna look at two types of anaerobic respiration. We'll look at one in muscles, in humans, and we'll also compare that to the anaerobic respiration that happens in plants. So firstly, muscles. Anaerobic respiration in muscles usually happens at times of vigorous exercise, where the heart cannot supply enough oxygen to the muscles quick enough. The heart is beating as fast as it can, it's pumping blood around the body as quickly as it can, but it just can't get enough oxygen to the muscle cells in order for them to keep respiring aerobically. But the muscle cells still want to release some energy, they still need to, to get you where you need to go. So you, they can still take the glucose and they can break it down directly into lactic acid plus ATP. However, the problem with this is that you get far less ATP. It's a really inefficient process compared with aerobic respiration, but at least it gives you some ATP. Now in plants, it's a different reaction. You take the glucose, but instead of breaking it down to lactic acid, plants break it down into ethanol plus carbon dioxide plus ATP. So you get this ethanol and this carbon dioxide being produced. Now actually, fungi do exactly the same type of anaerobic respiration. You are going to come across this reaction later on in the course when you study microorganisms because yeast, a single cell type of fungi, can do this reaction, we call it fermentation, to release this CO2 and this ethanol. And then that CO2 and ethyl can be used by humans to, in food manufacture, uh, in order to make bread. The CO2 is used to make bread rise and the ethanol is used when brewing alcohol. So anaerobic respiration in yeast is the same equation as the anaerobic respiration we've just seen there in plants. Now you don't need to know the chemical symbol equations for anaerobic respiration at all. Now here is a helpful little summary comparing aerobic and anaerobic respiration.